okay so so today i want to talk about uh, spanier whitehead duality but uh, before uh, going into the subject let me just recall uh, what i had said from last time because it's been a while so we had uh, we had uh, kind of given you an idea about the stable homotopy category stable homotopy category so the stable homotopy category remember um, there is a map from base topological spaces to so we will for today we will write this as s okay so that's the homotopy category of spectra so we have this uh, sigma infinity or the suspension spectrum functor and then we had this uh, omega the this was a left adjoint the right adjoint was omega infinity which went from s to top star omega infinity and for a spectrum it takes it to the zero th space and this stable homotopy category is a has a is a is a triangulated category Uh, we have these cofiber sequences, cofiber sequences that we were writing <clears throat> as x to y. If this is f, then the next one is cone of f, and the next one is suspension. And remember that suspension is invertible, so you can also continue on the left as well as the right. So. Um, now, after Pranav's lectures, I could I can also say this: homotopy pushouts are also homotopy pullbacks. Pushouts are also homotopy pullbacks. So these are part of the triangulated structure. And then uh, towards the end, I also talked about the smash product and the mapping spectrum. The smash product, I uh, so under this smash product, this makes um, both these things makes this category of spect stable homotopy category into a symmetric monoidal category. And the unit object is the sphere spectrum category. Oops. Category and unit is the sphere spectrum, which is S naught. So up to homotopy, that is the suspension spectrum of S naught. So I will just uh, write it as S naught throughout this talk, but. Um, when you are look, going to study algebras, there is some technical condition that um, this S not cannot be cofibrant. But <clears throat> uh, we are working in the homotopy category, so the homotopy type is S not. So we will preserve that. One thing which I did not mention last time, which I uh, uh, which I should start with, is that these uh, spectrum, <clears throat> these spectra. Uh, represent homology and cohomology theory. I should rather say the definition homology and cohomology theories defined by spectrum the theories defined by spectra. So suppose E is a spectrum and remember uh, 
the definition of cohomology theory is a sequence of functors on uh, CW complexes, which satisfy the homotopy invariance, long exact sequence axiom and the wedge axiom. And you notice that if I define E upper N of X, define E upper N of X to be the stable homotopy classes of maps from X to the nth suspension of E. So this is uh, defined for N integers. So then this is a cohomology theory. This is the cohomology theory induced by E. Okay, uh, it satisfies the long exact sequence because if you have a cofiber sequence and you map out of it into a certain object, that gives the long exact sequence. We have talked about this last time. And so that gives you the long exact sequence axiom. And the other two axioms are quite evident. You see, if I put a wedge on the left, then that really clearly comes out as a product. And if you have a homotopy, of course it is homotopy invariant, this definition. Um, so that's the cohomology theory. And the cohomology theory is, uh, oh, there is one more way of writing this. You can also write this as, equal to pi n of the mapping spectrum. Okay. You can also see it as pi n of the mapping spectrum. Pi n of the mapping spectrum is exactly what I wrote here. It's the, uh, oh, sorry. I should say minus n. Let me erase that. So this is equal to pi minus n of the mapping spectrum. That's exactly what I wrote here. So if you go back to the uh, rudimentary definition of f of x comma e, which I gave last time, um, that, uh, and you put pi minus n there, you will get exactly the definition I wrote here. So this is the cohomology theory and the homology theory you induced by e, because cohomology has this mapping spectrum, you would guess that it is induced by the smash product and indeed that is the case. So E lower n of X is defined to be the homotopy groups of the smash product of E with X. Okay. So this is the homology theory induced by E. Okay, so if you, uh, if you wonder, so we introduced erlenberg maclean spectrum last time, also K theory. So remember, if I take, so if I take pi n of HZ smash X, so that will actually be isomorphic to the reduced ordinary homology, okay, with Z coefficients. And so this is, so if I take pi minus n of f of x h z, if I did that, that would give reduced cohomology with z coefficient. Okay, so uh, these theories are all reduced version, so you can easily pass from the reduced to the unreduced by uh, adding a disjoint base point. <clears throat> so these are the homology and cohomology theories defined by spectra. And uh, like you can, uh, I like if you are interested, you can actually, so, so for example, how would you check something like pi n of z smash x, z x is uh, the reduced homology, you would, you would uh, use the uh, theorem that if you have a if you have homology theories and a map between them 
which in which has a same value at points then they will also have the same value on all cw complexes so if you put a point here then then this this is just a computation if x is s not this is just a computation of the pi zero of eight z so that's the reason why you get this okay uh, i'll not even elaborate much more on that but uh, this is something which um, you, you should keep in mind so uh, there is one way of starting from a cohomology theory to construct some kind of um, spectrum. Actually, it gives you an object in the homotopy category, and uh, and given a spectrum, also you have a homology theory associated to it. Now, let me come to what I want to talk about. Uh, I want uh, if I go back, if I went back to the uh, lecture. Last time I started with these um, duality isomorphisms, and I said that they have to do with um, something about dual objects in the stable homotopy category. So, it, so I will start today by talking about what I mean by dual object. So, uh, I start with so you can define dual objects in any symmetric monoidal category like this. So, if uh, C tensor one, one is the unit object, is a symmetric monoidal category. Monoidal category. Then we define an object, define X to is said to be dualizable. X is an object of C. X is said to be dualizable if um, there exists um, another object Y, another object Y plus uh, maps, plus maps in C from one map from X tensor Y to the unit object and the other map from, so we call this lambda and another map from one to y tensor x uh, such that uh, if I take uh, this composite, so I can write x and that is say isomorphic to x tensor one by a chosen isomorphism. And then I can apply this mu. So mu, sorry, I should write one tensor mu, identity tensor mu identity tensor mu will take me to x tensor y tensor x and then i apply lambda tensor identity so that will take my first two terms and i'll get one tensor x and that's isomorphic to x so this composite here, this composite should be the identity and also a similar diagram the other way around. So let me just write that down. So I should start with Y, right? Y is isomorphic to one, one tensor Y. Okay, and then I apply uh, this uh, mu tensor identity. So that takes me to, uh, it takes me to Y tensor X tensor Y. And now I apply identity tensor Lambda. So that takes me to Y tensor one, which is also isomorphic to Y. So, this composite is the identity. So, so X is said to be dualizable if there is another object Y and maps like this, such that uh, these two composites are the identity. And in this case, to be the dual of X. And 
in this case in this case y is said to be the dual of x okay so the usual example is uh, you can uh, you can try to work out what happens if i take c to be vector spaces over a field k vector spaces over k then you will end up showing that dualizable object is same as the finite dimensional vector spaces finite dimensional finite dimensional vector spaces okay and uh, why will you need finite dimensional you will see that uh, you can so the so if you, if y was x was just home from x to k uh, so if x is a vector space y you take home from x to k then you can define the map lambda the just by evaluation but to define the map mu uh, you will see that you need to like one one definition is you take you take a base a basis of x and you take a dual basis of y and you you send one to uh, summation uh, so so if vi is a basis of x and vi star is a basis of y then one thing which works is one goes to summation vi star tensor vi okay so i will leave that example just as it is but uh, but you can you can verify this it's a, it's not a hard exercise to work out okay so today the question i want to ask the symmetric monoidal category in front of me is the stable homotopy category so the question is what are the dualizable objects of x dualizable objects in s so what are the dualizable objects in the stable homotopy category of course some objects you see are uh, very easily you can see are dualizable so one is uh, your s not is dualizable and then you see sk and uh, so you see sk smash s minus k is s not so this sk is dualizable sk is dualizable with all s minus k okay so you see that um, these are dualizable let me now, let me just give one more exercise it's an easy exercise to do so so suppose in so c is a symmetric monoidal category remember and suppose x is dualizable x is dualizable and y is it's dual okay x is dualizable and y is its dual then uh, then you can prove that home for any objects for all w and z you can prove that home in c from w tensor x to z is isomorphic to home in c from w to y tensor z okay and the other way around and also the version for y 
So where y is on the left and x is on the right. So you can prove this. So this exercise, it's not a hard thing to do. You have to just, uh, you get a map in either direction using lambda and mu, okay? I mean, you take W tensor X and then you, uh, then you can, yeah, then you put S naught in the middle and so you take, you have a map from W tensor X to Z and then you uh, put, yeah, you put, I think you put a lambda and then you will, yeah. Yeah, basically you, you go via the first uh, few arrows and then you will get, um, you, you, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it as an exercise, okay? But let me uh, write a, this uh, thing in the stable uh, homotopy category. So in S, so I suppose one question. S, yeah. It is actually characterized as dualizability, right? That if given an X, if there's a Y for which this is true, it must be dualizable. Yeah, kind of, it will characterize that. Yeah. But I think uh, both both the things have to be true for that to be dualizable. So the same statement for y. Yeah. So so if I now look at the stable homotopy category, so in S, uh, what does this say? So in S, suppose uh, x is dualizable. X is dualizable. Then, then I will have uh, this, right? Um, then I will have homotopy classes of maps from W smash X to Z will be isomorphic to whatever the dual is. And for, and I will, uh, whenever it is dualizable, I will denote the dual by DX, okay? So where DX, is equal to the dual of x. So this will happen. Now uh, look at what this is telling me. So if I look at the right hand side, the right hand side says that if I say have a co-limit of uh, uh, things instead of z, this means that uh, if I take homotopy class of maps from x to that co-limit, that uh, the co-limit will can be taken outside, okay? So this already implies that X is a compact object. X is a, so X is a small object or compact, like she can't defined, okay? So in fact, uh, these, these are the things that are dualizable, so in an, Another way of uh, seeing this is you can show another exercise. This is a, not very hard to do, is that if X is dualizable, yeah, sorry, before that exercise, let me, uh, I have to say something, okay? So another consequence of the exercise uh, before, okay, oh, no, no I, I already have it here. So if I have uh, W smash X to Z is this. So. Uh, hello, uh, Shami, I, hello. Yeah. I couldn't follow the argument why it's compact. Something about co-limit that you said. Just yeah, so it, uh, so homotopy classes of maps from X actually X co-limits to co-limits. So that means that it is compact. So if you have a co-limit, the co so if I take x to co-limit of dash, this is isomorphic to co-limit of x comma dash. Right, so that will that will imply that it is compact. Okay, so it follows. Uh, uh, 
So what is the property? The homotopy class of maps have that property. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the homotopy class of maps. So in that, uh, in the, yeah. Ah, so what I, what I was saying is that um, you now notice that, uh, so if, so you now notice that with respect to this formula, this dual of X, because I have this map X smash DX to S not right. So if X is dualizable, X dualizable, this implies that I have this map from X smash DX to S not. So this so this gives me by adjunction a map from dx to f of x comma s not. Okay, and uh, you can figure out exercise is that if x is dualizable, this is an equivalence. This is a weak equivalence. So, so if X is dualizable, then the dual is always the mapping spectrum. So that is, if X is dualizable, then DX is F of X comma S naught and and so I can I can again if I apply the dual to dx I should get back x so I should get that x is uh, weak equivalent to f of x comma s naught and then again oh I'm out of space here let me just write it clearly x is equivalent to f of f of x comma s naught is not okay so Say that x is again the double dual like this. Okay. And now let me go to the next page. So another exercise which you can do here is if x is dualizable. So now you know what it means. You have to check the double dual. And show and uh, it means that x to that double dual is a weak equivalence, and x and y are dualizable, and f from x to y is a map of spectra. Then the mapping cone of f is dualizable. Is dualizable. Okay, so this is a, a simple exercise using mapping. <clears throat> so, uh, so the thing is, uh, if I have, uh, if I if I look at x to y to cone of f, this is a cofiber sequence. This is a cofiber. This will yield um, f of c f s not to f of y comma s not to f of x comma s not and this will also be a cofiber and again then if i take the double thing then i will get Then and I will get like this. Oops, it's not, it's not. And then to this, CF is not, is not. Yes, this will also be a cofiber, and this will have a natural map from the first cofiber sequence to the third, 
and two of the three are going to be weak equivalences so so will the third okay so that shows that uh, if x and y are dualizable so the same so is the cone and so this implies that all finite spectra are dualizable so what do i mean by finite spectra so finite spectra uh, means that um, all the spectra which are obtained by attaching finitely many cells so all spectra obtained by attaching finitely many cells in other words uh, that is that is i will write x equal to xn uh, where and x zero and i have this i'll write it like this x zero equal to a point star and xn is equal to x and of these maps x zero to x one to x n minus one xn okay and x i x i mod x i minus one so i shouldn't write mod rather the cofiber cone of x i minus one to x i should be should be a sphere s n i okay and n i is an integer Okay, so um, since we are in the category of spectra, I could also, uh, this is equivalent to saying that I have a map from S n i minus one to X i minus one. And if I take the cone of that, this is X i. So that's an equivalent statement because we are in spectra. We can take the, uh, we can we can extend any cofiber sequence to the left. Okay. Okay. So we have um, so so those are finite spectra, and we get that all finite spectra are dualizable, and so that that tells us already that if I have a suspension spectrum of finite CW complex, is dualizable. Finite CW complex. This is dualizable. Okay. So these are a particular example of finite spectra. All right. Let's see. Okay. Few more words about this uh, dual. So, so if I if X is a finite CW complex, I will write dx to be dx is. Um, I will often write dx to mean d of the suspension spectrum. Okay. So, so this is uh, nothing but f of X is not. And now, um, so what is the homology of dx? So if I take E k of dx, okay? So this is going to be what? This is pi k of E smash dx. And that's uh, isomorphic to homotopy classes of maps from SK to E smash dx 
this is the same as uh, this is the same as sk uh, i am applying duality in the exercise before uh, sk smash x to e and now you see that is the same as the um, e minus k of x okay so the so the homology of the uh, spanier whitehead dual is the negative cohomology of x and similar and the other way around so we so you see that e k of x is e minus k e k of dx is e minus k of x and e k e upper k of dx is e lower minus k of x. okay so so this is something which just uh, falls out from the uh, from the adjunction properties and the spanier whitehead duality right another point is uh, uh, so another thing i want to say here is that um, so if x is a finite spectrum then so is um, this f of x comma is not okay so is the mapping spectrum to s not uh, because if you write for if for x i have this um, x0 to x1 if i have this to xn if this is the a sequence of maps uh, which uh, lead to x then what is the sequence of maps that will lead to f of x comma is not what you have to do is you have to take x over x n so so now in, uh, i am writing this x mod x n that but it should just mean the co fiber okay so it's just easier to write this it all all means the mapping cone so the other thing. so i will have to write of x mod xn to it's not then f of x mod xn minus 1 to s not so x uh, mod xn minus 1 further quotient gives you x mod xn so you have this map in this direction and then you go all the way the final thing you get is f of x mod x0 to s not and you see the first one because x mod xn is a point the first one is a point and the last one is nothing but f of x comma s0 and so what are the cells the cells are just the negative cells of the ones for x so if you have s ni which appears on the top then s minus ni appears on the bottom okay so if you so so the thing is uh, what happens to the dual is you uh, so for x you keep on attaching cells in uh, various degrees um, then when you take the dual you are attaching cells in the negative of the degrees so if you uh, let's say if you want to calculate the dual of uh, so example if i want to say calculate the dual of cp2 okay so cp2 i know as a cell complex this is the cone of uh, the hof map right so this is the hof map from s3 to s2 hof map and um, so the dual of cp2 you have to take the uh, so the so this will be the cone of so the first cell will be s minus 3 and again you will get the hof map but it will be like this 
from s minus 2 to s minus 3. So you see that is uh, going to be like a uh, that's again going to be a copy of CP2, but uh, sigma minus something copies of CP2. Okay, but this phenomenon will not um, go much further. It's just that you have a two cell complex and this kind of thing holds. All right. All right. So, a couple of words about finite uh, spectra. Uh, these are also easy exercises. So, X is a finite spectrum. One thing you should uh, see is that uh, I have not mentioned so far that uh, I have not mentioned so far that the cells are attached in increasing dimension. In fact, you cannot do that because if you have a CW spectrum, you would have cells uh, going minus infinity as well as infinity. So then there's no way of uh, ordering them so that they can be attached in an increasing uh, degrees. But if you have a finite number of cells, you can always order them. And um, in fact, um, this is the point one is that we may rearrange this, we may uh, rearrange the attachments so that the cells are attached in increasing dimension, are attached in increasing dimension. Yeah, this is uh, easy. Uh, this is an easy exercise. You can uh, do it yourself. It just use the, uses the fact that if you have a sphere, then the say if you have a sphere SK, then pi R of SK is zero if R is less than K. So if you have a cell attachment, which is a lower cell attached after a higher cell, then that map will always avoid the higher dimensional cell go and attach to a lower skeleton. So that's the argument uh, to prove this. But one of the consequences of this fact is that uh, you can you can now uh, you can now suspend everything. You can suspend everything. You can put a high enough suspension so that uh, so that all the cell attachments are actually given by maps of spaces instead of uh, it's it's a it's uh, all the uh, cellular cell attachment maps are actually the is sigma infinity on applied onto an honest map of spaces so uh, when you do that that tells you that for a fi finite spectrum there is there exists a large integer n uh, such that the n for suspension of x is the suspension spectrum of a CW complex Y. Okay. So, yeah, sorry about the uh, announcement on the mic outside, but I hope uh, you can still hear me. So, so these two properties are there of finite spectrum. So you can always think of a finite spectrum as a C, as a negative suspension applied to a CW complex. You can always think about it like this. Oops, my screen went away. Yeah, so you can always think of a finite spectrum as the negative suspension applied to a CW complex. Okay. Uh, yeah. So in the remaining time, I will. I will now. I want to relate in the remaining. Oops. I don't know why this is going away all the time. What is going on? Screen. Yeah, sorry about that. 
So in the remaining time, I want to relate this uh, Spanier Whitehead duality to Alexander duality and tell you what that says about this D of X. Okay. So what I will take, uh, so now X is a finite place and I will say that I'll take X to be a finite complex inside SN. So this is a finite CW complex and it's a closed uh, subset of SN, finite um, CW complex inside SN. And I will uh, take A to be inside SN minus X. This is also a finite CW complex um, such that the inclusion is a homotopy equivalent. That A is homotopy equivalent to SN minus X. So my goal will be to, rela to relate the spanier white dual to the complement. Okay. So now uh, uh, I I will assume in addition that uh, so I I am I have assumed that this A is a compact subset. So uh, definitely it is not all of S n minus X. So I will I will take a point P inside S n which is outside both outside both X and A. Okay. So then uh, here, if I apply stereographic projection, so ST is going to be stereographic projection, stereographic projection, projection from SN minus T. This is the homeomorphism from SN minus T RN. Okay. Now I define X cross A, X cross A to SN minus one like this. I take an element X and A, and I will map it to the stereographic projection of X minus stereographic projection of A and because A is inside the complement of X and outside uh, P also, both of these, the, these are never equal. So this is not a, a non-zero um, element of R. So I can divide by the norm. ST of X minus ST of A. Okay, so that, so that gets me down to SN minus one. So that gives you a map from X cross A to SN minus one. Now I will do something called the hop construction on the map. So hop construction will uh, start from the join of X and A and will go to the suspension of SN minus one, which is now equal to SN. What is the Hopf construction? First of all, what is the join? I don't have uh, too much time to explain what the join is, but uh, basically it's a set of lines. It's a space of lines from X to A. So, so elements of it are written as T X plus one minus T A. So uh, basically uh, when T is equal to zero, it gives you an element of A. So that's, that's the starting point of the line. And when t equal to one, that gives you an element of x. That's the end point of the line. So I will tx um, one minus t a. That will map to. So if if I call this map mu, so this will this will or mu hat. I want to call this map mu mu the second map. So this will take uh, it to mu hat of a comma x comma a and then comma T. And then you can see, you will be able to prove that that is very fine. That's called the Hopf construction. It is um, used in the, you know, it's, a, it's a way of getting from an H-space structure on SN to 
a Hopf invariant one map uh, from S two n minus one to S n plus one. So <clears throat> that's a Hopf construction, and now the join is also homotopy equivalent to the suspension of X smash A. Okay, so this gives you a map from suspension of X smash A to S n. This is my mu, and so that gives you a stable map. Stable map from X smash A to S n minus one, or equivalently, a map from A to F of X S n minus one, which is equivalent to the Now in the stable homotopy category, sigma n minus one of f of x comma s not, or the this is the dual of x. Okay, so the, I get a map from the sigma one minus n of a to the spanier weighted dual of x. Okay. Now if you take homology on both sides. Now take homology on both sides. Take homology on both sides. So you get uh, this. Uh, so you get h tilde k of sigma one minus n a uh, two. H tilde k of d of x, but we saw that this is isomorphic to H. Uh, let me just take the suspension on the right. So this is uh, so I will take uh, yeah. So this is isomorphic to H tilde minus k of x, and on the left. Uh, this is nothing but the complement, so that's h tilde k minus n so suspension one minus n uh, yeah k plus n minus one of the s n minus x okay now. Uh, yeah, I got the numbers uh, mixed up, so I replaced uh, k this k prime equal to k plus n minus one. Then you will see that you will have on the left h tilde k prime of s n minus x, and on the right you will have h tilde of n uh, minus k prime minus one of x. So this is an isomorphism by Alexander duality. Of course, you have to figure out uh, what what the exact how the exact map goes, but I will not. I don't have time for that. But uh, but uh, you can figure that out. Uh, so so Alexander duality is uh, says that this is an isomorphism on homology, and a consequence of that. The consequence is that if I take this sigma one minus n a to dx, uh, this is an iso on homology, and now both sides are finite spectra, right? Both sides are fi finite spectra. So after you suspend both sides, um, so you have. Uh, so this becomes uh, so sustainable, right? So that this because this comes from a map of C W complexes. So this uh, is actually something like sigma m of sigma one minus n a to sigma m of d x. This is a map of uh, suspension spectra.
So now you just apply Whitehead theorem. This implies it's a weak e equivalence by Whitehead theorem. Equivalence by Whitehead theorem. Theorem. So that tells you that this uh, sigma one minus n a to dx, this is a weak equivalence of spectra. Okay, so this is a weak equivalence of spectra. And I should stop there. I'll just mention one thing is that, uh, see one of the consequences, this is, this is a very nice thing. One of the consequences is that if you look at, if you put a finite complex inside SN and you look at the complement, then what this, this is saying is that the stable homotopy type of the complement is actually depend is actually uh, determined by the stable homotopy type of x mm. okay so that's one of the consequences of this uh, theorem so i don't know I, there are, let me write that but uh, we will not use that also later on but you see this is this kind of result mm. is very nice uh, it is it's it has some surprising ap uh, applications the complement usually, if you take a, take the complement of a manifold inside a manifold, that kind of thing is uh, actually even strictly dependent on the embedding and so on. But here we have, we have this kind of result that the stable homotopy mm. type of the complement is determined by the stable homotopy type X. Okay, so I will stop there, and uh, I'll I'm sorry, I think I am out of time anyway, so I'll stop sharing now.